Hi there, it's Jeff here with a, a video looking at uh, paper one as we head towards the micro paper and some possible hot micro topics for the first exam of the year. Hi there. Now, a uh, key point is you need to revise across the spec, across the syllabus. Don't miss out key topics because, of course, the, the exam can take any topic, any question they like. But here's a, just a selection of interesting ideas, topical questions, uh, topic areas that might well feature this year. There hasn't been much so far on uh, consumption externalities, demerit goods, that kind of stuff, and linking it maybe to information failure. So perhaps this could come up. Topical areas include things like vaping, the case for a ban on disposable vapes, the case for a tax on vaping. Uh, vaping, of course, is a product with mixed externalities, both positive and negative. The growth of the energy drinks market and the question of whether the government should regulate or intervene in some ways in that sector. Fast fashion. Super important, the growth of low cost, low price fashion, and in particular, the many uh, externalities, both of production and consumption, that that generates, and things like problem gambling. So, loads of very topical consumption market failure issues that could well feature on paper one. So, worth revising information failure, asymmetric information in particular, and your externalities diagrams. Again, public goods could be a key topic this year. Pure public goods and quasi-public goods. Maybe a link to the environment. In particular, evaluating the case for the government, the state, to uh, regulate, intervene, legislate, and promote environmental public goods, such as clean air zones. Quite a few cities and towns, ULES in London, of course, uh, clean air zones designed to improve clean air as a public good. And the arguments for and against that kind of thing. And alternatives to that. You can't go wrong in paper one if you have a good understanding of and awareness of government failure, one of the main causes, including regulatory capture. So potential government failures from interventions in markets such as price controls, maximum minimum prices, and uh, the impact of subsidies both to producers and consumers. Expect uh, maybe some topic areas on costs, business costs, both short run costs, but also critically long run costs of production. So economies and diseconomies of scale, the minimum efficient scale, and the importance of those economies of scale for both producers and consumers in different industries. My instinct is they may well choose for a data response or even an essay, changing costs, revenues and profits in industries impacted by the pandemic. So, for example, the cinema sector, uh, airlines, low cost gyms, pubs, hotel chains, Car and pet insurance, the surge in demand for pets, the surge in demand for second-hand cars, the very high inflation in pet insurance and car insurance. So they could well take an industry along those lines, perhaps low-cost gyms and cinemas, uh, and think about pricing strategies and di different business objectives uh, at different stages of the economic cycle. Here's a topical issue here, March 24, but it goes back obviously many years. How dangerous is vaping? What is the disposable vape ban and what is the vaping tax? Different types of intervention on that industry. And here's a, an article on London's ULES, ultra low emission zone, averts more air pollution than caused by the capital's airports, according to uh, a new report. So the old ULES, of course, came in, the ultra low emission zone came in a few years ago. And uh, of course, the debate about whether it should be widened and or you need a range of other interventions to achieve significant improvement in air quality, air pollution. Labour market should feature in micro papers. We've asked questions in the past on labour supply and skill shortages, perhaps this time labour demand. So what are the main influences on labour demand in, a, in industries such as, for sake of, sake of argument, software uh, or security or whatever it is, OK? But the impact of automation, robotics, government intervention, what factors affect labour demand? And trade unions. Very topical at the moment, particularly in the UK and also in the United States, where unions seem to be making a bit of a comeback in sectors such as the car industry. So maybe a question evaluating the relative power and roles of trade unions in the UK labour market, particularly facing against monopsony employers, and especially during a cost of living crisis. Housing, always a topical micro paper question. What are the key factors affecting housing demand and also new housing supply, the elasticity of housing supply and evaluating, well, analysing and evaluating the case for different interventions to try and address a chronic shortage of housing in Britain, which is certainly having consequences, uh, both people wanting to buy and also to rent. 
Economic decision making, economics as a social science, longer questions perhaps on why consumers divert and depart from rational choice. Uh, it's a bit of behavioural economics and what those consequences might be for welfare, perhaps linked to the earlier question on, on the consumption externalities, things like problem gambling and vaping. Market structures should appear, clearly. We've had quite a few questions in recent times on oligopoly and monopoly, so perhaps a little tilt more towards contestable markets, uh, factors affecting contestable markets and sectors such as parcel deliveries, there are many others, monopolistic competition in craft beer making, for example, um, or the nail salon market, <laughs> and the possible impact on economic efficiency. You can't go wrong, by the way, in a micro paper if you know your economic efficiencies, allocative, productive and dynamic, and the ways in which changing contestability can impact on consumer welfare. Here's a paper uh, about AI apocalypse could take away almost 8 million jobs in the UK, so which people are most at risk from the widespread adoption and the expansion of generative AI, large language models and so on and so forth. Does AI create new jobs, more jobs than it destroys? We're going to find out, I think. And housing policy, to what extent should the government introduce uh, different strategies to make housing more affordable, including things like rent controls. Big topics, privatisation and deregulation. Assessing the arguments for and against privatisation and deregulation in sectors such as the Royal Mail and other industries. Nationalisation. Most people think this is a hot topic this year. In particular, the two big utilities, the water and sewage sector, about which so much has been written. The travails of Thames Water have written large in recent times, haven't they? Uh, but also things like the rail industry. Come back to that in a second. And then your interventions. Of course, there's going to be questions of indirect taxes and subsidies. They usually are. But what about price controls, maximum prices, rent controls in housing, maybe executive pay caps, maybe some financial market market failure. So maybe some price caps in those kind of markets, interest rate caps, minimum prices. Well, minimum wages, yes, labour market, but also guaranteed prices for renewables, minimum um, alcohol pricing, such as in Scotland. And in wider environmental context, of course, the UK having left the European Union, leaving the European Union carbon trading system, to what extent should the UK replace it or has replaced it with its own system of trading permits and uh, the assessment, assessment of carbon trading against alternatives such as subsidies for renewables, tax incentives, tougher regulations and carbon taxes. It's a huge amount to cover. Um, nationalisation, I think, might figure prominently. So Scottish train services, Scotland nationalised in the spring of 2022. To what extent should that model be applied? It may well happen anyway, but to what extent should that model be applied across the UK? And crucially, the big topic of the one of the great topics for economists to study the the UK water industry and the and the here's this article from the FT: UK government looks at nationalising Thames Water as the crisis deepens. Should the water and sewage industry be taken out of the private sector? Should there be reverse privatisation? and a return to a state-owned water industry. Now, I'll leave that question with you. What we'll do here is we will add some links to some key resources in the comments section uh, and in the main body of this video. So do have a look at some of the links to find some revision resources on these topics. Hey, good luck with paper one. It's on its, uh, it's, on its way pretty soon. Stay happy, stay curious, stay positive, and hopefully see you sometime soon.